Uh, it is the afternoon show here on BBC Radio Wales with me, Alan Thompson. Now then, ladies and gents at home of the afternoon show, listening audience, today we are in the presence of guitar playing royalty because. <laughs> so catch the oh, pigeon. I'm because... building it up. <laughs> <laughs> i got a link to do, Tom, uh, because oh. Royalty uh, is with us in the studio today because my guest on the programme, in fact, we've got two of them today, is none other than the great Tommy Emmanuel. Tommy has played with the likes, listen to this lot, of Chet Atkins, Eric Clapton, Sir George Martin, uh, Hank Marvin, Joe Walsh, Stevie Wonder, Les Paul and the Western Australia Symphony Orchestra, to name just a few. He's been a professional musician since the age of six. He's toured with uh, Tina Turner and is a four times platinum selling recording artist. He's been a professional musician for 45 years. He doesn't look it. And tonight he's in the Beaufort Ballroom in Ebber Vale, and he's in the studio with me this afternoon. Tommy Tell Emmanuel, it's quite a link for you. <laughs> Boy, you, ah. you really did you? Did you, I really do all those things? Well, so according to my well, research, yes. Yeah. Well, that, that's only a little bit of it. <laughs> there's, there's loads more. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to so, BBC. Thank you so much for, for having us on. Hey, uh, well, it's, it's, it's nice to see you. Before good. we have a chat about your career, you're not mm. alone today. You've got somebody I'm with not, you. I've got my friend Gareth Pearson, who's a, a, a local man, yeah. and uh, I met him years ago. Um, uh, when you were about what fourteen or something? Yeah, fourteen yeah. And, years uh, ago. Yes, yeah, you, and uh, he's just done so well for himself. Um, yeah. Came over to Nashville for the Chet Atkins convention a couple of years ago and just tore him up. Right. And uh, he's been on this tour with me, doing the, doing the whole tour. Well, we're lucky to have the both of you in the well, studio. So, so before we have this. a bit of a chat, let's get straight to some music because I All love right. to hear live music. I'm a very bad guitarist myself, so I love to hear guitar music. So All right. I see this and, and should we play something together? Please, what? Well, what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Please do. All right. We'll we'll play a song, and uh, Gareth will will take uh, the melody in this, and then I'll take a little solo. And whatever. This is a song by the great Jerry Reed. It's called Jerry's Breakdown. One, two, three. <laughs> Unbelievable. The crowd went mild. <laughs> the audience leapt. I foot. wish we had an audience with us in the uh, after playing like that. You need. Uh, I haven't got an audience sound effect. I've got. A, I've got a drum roll and a laugh, but that's <laughs> that's not Thank right. You. <laughs> doesn't work. I like that. It? I like that. Yeah. You need some kind of audience response. That yeah. is fantastic. Throw some babies up in the air or something. Yeah, how, get, get excited. Yeah. How do you how do you do that? Well, Gareth did most of it. I just played the rhythm and then took a little solo. But. <laughs> That's a Jerry Reed piece. There, there, there are quite a lot of songs that we play together. Let's play a little bit of Cannonball Rag. For Please them. do. Should yeah. we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's have some more. We'll have a little bit of uh, harmony together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, I like that. I have gotten applause, so that's the best I could do. Sorry, thank you. I just love that stuff. It, I you. feel like when I hear you play that, I should be chasing somebody around the building. It's exactly. like Benny it's Hill like, chasing yes. music, you know? Be Benny Hill chasing music, exactly. Benny, yeah. Benny Hill chasing music, wonderful stuff. Thank you very much. That, that, that piece is called Cannonball Rag. It was written by Merle Travis right. back in the 40s. But, okay. uh, it, it makes a nice piece to play play together because there's a lot of nice harmonies in there. Yeah, well let's bring Gareth in because one minute you're you're a school kid in Cumbria just learning to play the guitar after hearing Tommy Emanuel play. A couple of years later, <laughs> you're on tour with the great man and stuck in a BBC Radio World studio with me. Uh, <laughs> this is what happened to Gareth Pearson, so he's uh, with us today. Hi Gareth. Welcome hey, to the program. how's it going? Hey, nice to, nice to see you and, and, and nice to hear you play as well. How long have you, first of all, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 18 years 18 old. years of age, right. How long have you been playing the guitar to get to that standard? It's going to be four years this Christmas. Is that all? Four years? Four years. It's actually impossible, but, but he's defying gravity, you know. <laughs> so you've never, until the age of 14, you hadn't touched a guitar? No, no. So what happened? You picked it up? So, I mean, obviously, you, you must have a gift for that. You can't just learn to play that well. That's just a gift oh, you've got. I wouldn't say I got a gift. I got a passion. That's about it, really, you know. Right. Yeah, well, you must, how, how many hours a day do you practice? Um, not enough, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind. Of, actually, the question should be: Do you sleep and do you eat? That, that's kind of you know. When I, I was Gareth's age, it was the same thing. I I lived on pizza and uh, yeah. and no sleep. Because you, know? you started playing when you were four. That's right, Tommy. Yeah. Well, I didn't turn professional until I was six. So. <laughs> well, you you know you left it a while then. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Going to rush into it, Tom. That's right. <laughs> but obviously, you guys must have to rehearse an awful lot. But I mean, that is a gift you've got, isn't it? Not every. I mean, I've been playing the guitar for thirty years. I can't get anywhere near that. Well, uh, it depends. You know, uh, I believe it's it's our calling to do what 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 we do. When we play music, people get happy. That's yeah. a good thing. Sure. You know. But you do have to yeah. work very hard. At it, obviously. You have to work at it every day. Um, and but you know, people often ask me. You know, uh, you must practice ten hours a day. Well, when, when do I get time to practice ten hours? I'm traveling. All sure. the time. Of course you are. I Gareth. write songs in airports and stuff like you that. You play with Ray Davis, Gareth, is that right? Um, I didn't play with Ray Davis. Right. I supported him. Let me let me change that question. You haven't played with Ray Davis, have you? Yes. No, I haven't. He <laughs> knows more he knows too many chords. <laughs> Ray knows three. <laughs> but he uses them he very uses well. Them so he well. uses them very well. <laughs> Should we, do you play on the tour uh, individually as well, obviously? So yeah. can we maybe hear Gareth, do you fancy playing a piece on your own? That'd be great. Uh, sure. Hold We'd on love to hear that. Yep. He's, he's, he's going to put his capo on. Yeah, Cape. Change the key. Bit of a capo. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Okay, what are you going to play for us? Uh, this is a, a banjo tune I wrote called Adrenaline Rush. Okay, let's hear that. Sweet, really nice. Have, have that. 
adrenaline rush. I like that, Gareth. You wrote that yourself. Uh, yeah, thank you. You're 18 years of age. I'm curious to know why this, this particular style of music appeals to you so much, because I guess most guys at your age aren't listening to this kind of music. Well, the reason why I took up the guitar was I, I first saw Tommy mm. when I was uh, 14. My dad showed me footage of him, and um, it was like a, a slap in the face, you know, that's what, what real music sounds like. Yeah. So uh, obviously I looked into it and he led me directly to the source of Mill Travis, Chet Atkins and uh, Jerry Reed and they've been, you know, and Tommy have been my like influences in music. Right, and you're touring now with the great man Tommy Chet Atkins has been a huge influence on you. Indeed. Well, when I first heard him when I was uh, seven years old. I uh, tuned in the radio and this is what I heard. I heard... This. Remember that? Yeah. Right? And, you I, and I could I could hear that he was playing everything at once, you know. He was playing the bass part, the rhythm part like that, and then the He was playing the melody completely separately, but it was all self-contained and I just loved that sound. Most people said to me, well, it's a, probably a recording trick. It's them damn Yankees. Don't t <laughs> don't take any notice of it, you know. <laughs> Go back to your Shadows records, Bruce. And uh <laughs> <clears throat> but I could hear what was going on, and I, I was so driven to work it out. And then after my my dad died when I was 11, mm. I wrote a letter to Chet, you know, and, and on the envelope I wrote, Chet Atkins, Nashville, America. <laughs> that, was, that was the address, and he got it. And he, got and, and he, he, he wrote back to me and sent me a nice photograph with an autograph and everything, and, right. and we just kind of stayed in touch. And then uh, in 1980, I'm, I'm, I'd had saved up enough money from playing to take my first trip to America. And uh, and because uh, he'd, he'd sent me a letter saying, if you ever come to Nashville, here's my office number and I'll see you. Right. And so I, I took him up on his offer and he did see me and we sat and played for oh, hours man. and it was just awesome. That must have been really <coughs> it was a, a, amazing. amazing he experience. was the guy who inspired you and there you are sat playing with him. Yeah. And you know, and then you know, sixteen years later, I I got to record an album with him, yeah. uh, which was you know like my a dream come true for a kid from nowhere. Yeah. And um, you know, it it just reminded me of it, if you were a painter, you know, it, it would be like meeting uh, Van Gogh or or somebody. Sure. You know? uh, uh, so it, it it was it was a great uh, experience, and then we got nominated for a Grammy. We won the. Uh, Nashville Music Awards for the best instrumental album, yeah. and um, uh, and then we just kind of kicked on from there. And Chet passed away in two thousand one, right? Um, and before that, he uh, bestowed upon me his kind of uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it discipleship or something. Yeah. But uh, uh, I have letters after my name now. CGP means Certified Guitar Player. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> so that's the great thing about music. You're passing it on to, to Gareth. It's, yeah, it's, it's, and Gareth is influencing younger people than than him too. And this is the way it's meant to be. You yeah, know? sure. What, I can't think of something better to do than to put a guitar in a young person's hand. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot lot better than a computer game. Well, you know? I think people love real players as well. Yeah. Like this. They don't, don't uh, I say you that. You know what? All we want is the real deal, isn't it? You know, and thank God for that, because otherwise we'd be out of a job. Sure, you of know? course. Um, and when you when you go on the stage, when you play music from your heart and your soul, mm. you're doing something real out there, and people feel it. And, and that's why people come and it. see you. I mean, well, you can always tell when we've got a hot guest in the afternoon studio because there's about 20 BBC people next door <laughs> watching you. You know, they all cram into the room. We didn't have this one Scritty Blitty were on. Not that Scritty Blitty on, but you know, I remember, well, yeah. you know, you you know, they well, like they like to nice. see. You know, it's, it's great to have you in the studio. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. Well, that's good. But believe me, it's a uh, for an artist like myself. Um, uh, it's it's not easy to get on radio. It's not easy to get on television, um, because what what you do appeals to people, but the uh, media in general yeah. uh, don't don't make anything of it. You right. Know? You had uh, an unusual childhood, actually, musically as well, didn't you? I mean, you say you started yeah. playing when you were four years yeah, of age. Yeah, I was I was the I was the kind of front man of the even though I was the youngest. Um, I found that I I was. I felt uh, a sense of freedom and adventure on stage, mm. and my brothers and sisters played as well, but they were they were much more reserved than I was. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we were a quartet, and uh, I remember one, one day we were uh, doing this open air concert, and uh, we played our set, and the, you know the crowd went mild, and and then we <laughs> we came off, and then these three skinny kids 
little older than us went on stage and one guy was playing a guitar with one finger like yeah. that. He had open tuning, right? right? And my brother and I were laughing. We were snickering away there like, these kids will never get anywhere. Look at that guy, the way that guy plays. It was the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never get anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so I got to... I got to tell Barry that story one day. How do you like to do that? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Barry just bought Johnny Cash's house, so he's moved to Nashville. Did he really? Yeah. So he's a, he's a, Nash, a Nashvillian. He's a Nashvillian. Um, yeah. when you, I mentioned the, the, the list of people that you've worked with or played with. Uh, mm. Clapton, Hank Marvin, Joe Walsh, Stevie Wonder, Les Paul, mm. all sorts of people. The great musicians. I mean, when you ah. sat down with Clapton, I mean, he's the, he's the, you know, he's the king, isn't he? A lot of, ah. you know, how do you, how do you find these guy. guys? Yeah. Well, I, I actually did the tour with him in Australia. Right. I, was the, I was the opening act. Right. And we, I got to know him pretty well on that tour uh, and his band. And it was just really, really beautiful. Right. He was so nice to me, i got to tell you. He really was real supportive. And, and um, uh, Lee Dixon, his, his guitar tech guy, said to me, Eric never comes to see the opening act ever, you know. And, and he did. He, he came to see me play and then I got invited to uh, to come to his room and, you know, we kind of jammed a you, little. You jammed with Clapton? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And, and is, nice. is there a competitiveness there or is no. it just sort of trading off each other? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like you know me getting in the ring with Mike Tyson. You, know, you want to go a few rounds, Mike? I don't think so. He's the you know you really rate him obviously as one of the well, greatest. Well, uh, no, uh, Eric. Uh, Eric is such an inspiration to so many people, mm. and, and you know when I first met him, I, I I thought about that moment long before it happened, and I wanted to tell him what a wonderful singer he was because right. everybody knows how great he plays. But I love his singing and his songwriting very much, and that's the first thing I said to him. Yeah. I said, before we say another word to each other, I want to tell you how much I love your singing. Right. You know? And he was really moved by that. I bet he was. Are yeah. you always learning new things on the guitar? Obviously All you the play time. For, oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's a, a the guitar is such a, a, a demanding instrument, you know. Um, but it, it's such an adventure. You never know what's going to happen. And inspiration, uh, songwriters wait patiently for inspiration. You know, you you, you can be have a, a kind of a hot streak for a while and write, you know, four or five songs in in three or four days, yeah. and then you won't write anything for three months, and you'll wait and you'll wait, and then an idea will 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 will. will Hit you, you know. Sure, and, um, and it's a sort of instrument you keep on learning all the time. All the I mean, time, yeah. Yeah, and is there? A, would you stay around till after the news? Because I've got loads more questions to ask. Oh, you. We've okay. got some more live music, so we'd sure. love for you to stick Thank around you. because Thanks we'll talk about the gig as well. I'll play a record, and then we'll go into the news. Is okay. it, before we do that, is there one piece of advice you could? I mean, kid, kids, you know, obviously learning the guitar all the time. Is there one sort of piece of advice <clears> you could give to people? Obviously, practice is a huge amount yeah. of it. But well, f- first of all, you've got to have some good music to play. Yeah. So you know, learning some songs. Not not just uh, the theory or the modes or scales or any of that kind of thing. That's all very important. But yeah. learning some songs to have to play, th- that's what will keep you interested right. is learning some songs. Right. It's about the music. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't read music. I, I play everything by ear. I, I've never learned to read music and I'm self-taught. Okay. I kind of begged and stole and borrowed everything. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, it all know, helps. Get a good teacher. Tommy. <laughs> I like your style. We'll have more music from Tommy Emmanuel and uh, from Gareth Pearson after the news, which is coming up in a moment. But let's... Yeah. <laughs> the Who and Won't Get Fooled Again from 1971 wow. uh, from The Who's next album. You enjoy that, Tommy? That was the sound. That, yeah, but Pete's mm. sound there was a... Uh, that's a Fender Telecaster into a, a wall of Marshall amps. Wow. Just cr- everything cranked on 10. That's Underrated that guitar sound. player, Townsend, actually. He was a great oh, writer, obviously, but good player. He was a fantastic player, yeah. yeah absolutely. And, uh, and Keith Moon, I, I used to love watching him play because he, he looked like a little boy playing the drum didn't he <laughs> never played the same thing twice no yeah. he, he was great they were what a wonderful band they were and and i was listening to the bass part on that track and said you know that they the, the um, end whistle was like painting a picture underneath yeah. uh, all the time telling another story yeah. with his bass part it was brilliant he was absolutely like a lead guitarist brilliant. on the bass really wasn't brilliant he? absolutely brilliant tommy yeah. emmanuel and gareth pearson are in the studio with us this afternoon now gareth first let me t- ask me a question how did you get to tour and how did you get to play with tommy how did the the two of you get together how did it happen? Well, uh, I first met Tommy after I, th- I think um, in Worcester, wasn't it? Worcester, was it? no, yeah. no, Ebervale. Oh, it was Ebervale. Ever- okay. So it was about a year after I started playing. Um, we, we, what happened was uh, uh, he, uh, his father dropped him off at at, at the at the theatre for yeah. the, for the sound check, and then. And I said, well, you stay with me. And, and so we, we, he came backstage and, and we, we had some food together and yeah. he played me some songs and I showed him a few things and all that. Right. And then uh, I think it was like six months later, I was in, in Cardiff or 
Swansea, I can't remember. Cardiff. Which, Cardiff, yeah. And Gareth played uh, a short set to start out the night and I went down into the audience and took out my mobile phone and I rang the president of the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society in, in Knoxville, Tennessee. I got him on the phone. I said, listen to this, and I held the phone up. <laughs> And I said, that boy is 15 years old and he's from Wales. Uh-huh. He's got to come to Nashville, you know. Yeah. And uh, he, was, he was stunned and amazed, of course. And uh, next thing, Gareth was invited to Nashville. Wow. And what did you think of Gareth when you first saw him play? Obviously, can I you tell him something? I thought he needed a, a, a good meal and a shower. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> no, I thought uh, uh, he's one of many people that I've seen who have incredible potential. Yes. You know, and uh, he's gifted and and he has what it takes he has determination and dedication and yeah they're, they're, that that that's what you need yeah and gareth what have you what has tommy taught you the most you think what have you learned most so far from him uh get the work get the work yeah. get to work yeah. get yeah. to work yeah. you know Practice it's a, a funny thing al but when people come up to us after shows for yeah. autographs and stuff and uh you know they uh, I sell books as well. I've got uh, books with all my songs that are in tablature and in music. And people say, you know, can you write something to inspire my son? He's 14 and he's been blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I always write, get to work. Yeah. You know, wh- what else are you going to say? Sure. Yeah. You know, there, there isn't going to be a bolt of lightning come out of the sky yeah. and strike you and, and suddenly you're good. Yeah. You've got to get to work. You've got to get to, and put the hours in. And then That's it. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would you play something, uh, something for us again? Sure. Yeah. We'd love uh, to hear something. Yeah. Here's a song I wrote, which I haven't recorded yet. But, uh, sorry, it'll be a world first. Ladies oh, an gentlemen. exclusive. Yes, an oh. exclusive for you on the afternoon show. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a song I wrote dedicated to one of my favourite writers, George Harrison. This is called Papa George. Sweet Papa George, dedicated Papa George. To, to George Harrison. Indeed. A new song. Um, uh, did you work with George Harrison? No. I, I met George once uh, at the studio when we were recording uh, uh, some tracks with Bill Wyman and the Rhythm Kings. Right. Chris Rea and George Harrison and myself did uh, a three-part uh, solo on, on a track um, and uh, neither Chris or George were feeling very good that day. Mm. Uh, but actually, George answered the door when I when I rang the bell on the studio. He came and answered the door, and it was so funny. <laughs> I nearly dropped my guitar. Um, but then he had to leave. He wasn't feeling well. Right. But, okay. uh, and that, he didn't. Poor George. He he didn't look well either. Yeah. But what a beautiful man he was. Well, let me name drop. I was at Andy Fairweather Lowe's house the other day. That was oh, a name great. drop for you. Recording a yeah. program for Radio Wales called I Wrote the Songs, and he played he, with Harrison in '92 on his tour, and he, he was did. telling me uh, how. F- uh, fabulous a guitar player, an underrated guitar player, really, George Harrison oh, was. Oh, George is wonderful. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. What a writer, though. Sure. You know, uh, I just loved his music so much. Yeah. Tell me about your, the, the, the ba- when he started off in Australia, obviously from yeah. Australia, Tommy. The Trailblazers yeah. was the, a band. The, that was the second band. The, the first band, band. Yeah, well, actually, no, it was the third band. Right. The very first band was <laughs> called the Emmanuel Quartet, would you believe? But uh, we had to change the name because people thought we were, you know, a a string quartet playing classical music <laughs> because would, of our name, right? So then in 1963, when uh, the song Wipeout came out, you remember that? Oh. Right? I used to do a drum solo because uh, I, I, I played drums as well. Yeah. And I, I used to do a, a drum solo. So, and and that, that was by a band called the Safaris. Right. So my, my, my father, in all his brilliance, came and called us the Midget Safaris. <laughs> and uh, so that was the second band. And then after Dad died and, and my eldest brother... 
uh, moved away and, and uh, my oldest sister got married and moved away and had children and what, what have you. My my closer brother and I formed an, another band called the Trailblazers. Right. And we did uh, – we played clubs, we played weddings, we played uh, – that, that kind of stuff. And then when we got on TV and, and we went on all these competitions called uh, New Faces and Six O'Clock Rock and How stuff How old were you like then, that. Tommy? I was about 12. 12? Yeah. Right, okay. And uh, – um, we we did a lot of that kind of thing, and then then we started recording, and then then I I moved away. I I kind of ran away from school just before my fifteenth birthday, much to my mother's dismay. I broke her heart, you know. When I, I came home one day and I said, "I've handed my books in, Mum. I'm I'm going to Sydney tomorrow." Mm. I, 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 there was nothing there for me, you know. And she didn't take that well. She didn't take it real well, but she understood, and. Uh, so I moved to the big city and I got a job straight away. I auditioned uh, uh, as a guitar player for a, a pretty famous singer in, in those days. And uh, I got the job and I started the next day. Yeah. Um, and you've been playing ever since? Wow, yeah. I, I've never stopped playing. Yeah. You know? Which in the world of music is quite a, often quite a difficult thing to do. It's not the easiest profession. Well, I feel, it's, I feel I'm just starting to, to grow as a, as a player and a writer now. Yeah. You know, I'm a... Songwriting is my passion. It, right. It's what drives me. But but uh, I love to entertain people, and, yeah. and and I love to make people feel good. Oh, yeah. I, and I mean this as a compliment. You know, you're obviously such a great musician, and you play with all these guys. Why aren't you? And I mean, I do mean this as a compliment. Why mm -hmm. aren't you a much much bigger star than you clearly sh you know you clearly should be? I mean, are you an ambitious kind of character? Were you ambitious perhaps when you were a bit younger? Um, I've always been ambitious, but I've I also have never looked for the easy road. You know, I've always taken. The road much less travelled. You know, I'm playing Abervale tonight. You know, not many people would would do that uh, when they could come and play Cardiff or yeah. Swansea. Yeah. But you know, there's something wonderful about taking your music to the to the people. Yeah. There, there really is. It means a lot to them, and it means a lot to you because you can see that it, that it's it's doing something good out there. Sure. What we are, what we are playing are weapons of mass con construction. Yeah. So. Do you do a Beatles melody? Do I hear the? Do the, I ever? I am a big Beatles oh, fan. I, I know mean, you are. So yeah. Let me uh, let me play a little Beatles. It's my philosophy in life to always get the Beatles into every interview I do. It doesn't matter who. It's not not just musicians. Good. Anybody. Um, and I heard reliably you do a cracking Beatles medley. Well, thanks. Um, here's here's a, a day tripper. Oh yeah. And Lady Madonna together. Oh. So so. Uh, and. where it sounded good. They are fantastic. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> that is absolutely superb. Oh, thanks. Oh, Thank really, you. really. <laughs> their, their melodies are so nice to play. You sure, know? yeah. 
Yeah, great they, tunes. They so comes great tunes. <clears throat> Got a text message here uh, for you, Tommy. John yeah. Edwards in Hengoy says, I last saw Tommy Emmanuel playing with uh, Les Paul at the Iridium ah. Club in New York. Yeah. And Les Paul said, he's a quote from Les Paul, said, I was doing great tonight until this guy beat up on me. And uh, John, <laughs> John Edwards says, tonight will be the fifth time that he's seen you and ah. the second time to see Gareth as well. So he's looking forward well, to seeing thanks, the both John. of you. Yeah, playing with Les Paul, that must have been good. Oh, it was wonderful. I, I love working with Les. Yeah. We, we, we had a concert for him uh, last year at Carnegie hall it was his 90th birthday mm. and uh it was such a beautiful experience yeah before yeah. i turn to the new album you once worked also this is strange with tiny tim is that right yeah that's that's what right. was that like? tiny came to australia and uh um the guy who was his promoter and his manager saw my brother and i we we had a we had a band and uh he saw us playing and and uh told tiny about us and um uh, he, he came up to us after the show and he said, uh, Tiny w- would like to record w- with you. And I said, well, uh, we, we play seven nights a week around town, uh, but w- we can work during the day. And he said, no, well, he, he only records between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. <laughs> and I, so I then, as a, as a kind of joke, I said, we're very expensive at that time. <laughs> he said, how expensive? I said, $500 an hour. Wow. Like that. And he said, no problem. Is cash all right? <laughs> said, yeah, okay. So um, we turned up the next night. We, we finished our, our uh, gig at about 11 o'clock. And then I went home, took a shower and everything, and yeah. went and picked my brother up. And away we, we all went into the studio. And Tiny arrived there in his pink uh, Mickey Mouse suit yeah. and with his yellow tie. <laughs> Red shoes and pink hair, and uh, we we proceeded to record four tracks that night, right. and then the next night it was just him and I, and uh, we did a song called uh, "The Bible My Mother Gave to Me," yeah, and and he said, "Now I want you to play this." He, he showed me the chords on the ukulele, and then I, I played the chords. He said, "And in the middle, I just want you to make something up, because I'm going to do a sermon." In the middle, right? So, so he did, and he really got into it. So he's holding the microphone, and we're, we're wearing headphones, and I'm playing in a. Now the Bible my mother <laughs> left for me, like that, right? And uh, <laughs> and then he goes, brothers and sisters, and he starts this this uh, gospel thing, you know. And he really got into it. He was down on his knees and spitting and sweating and wow. yeah, and rolling around the floor and. They recorded the whole thing, and I'm, I'm like making all this stuff up <laughs> underneath, trying to sound like a church organist, you know. And uh, and then he and and after he's, uh, you've got to turn away from your sins and blah blah blah. And he goes on, he get, gets to re, gets to a fever pitch, looks over at me as calm as could be, and just goes the Bible like that <laughs> to finish the song off. We did it in one take. It was like a miracle. It was a miracle. He was a one-off, Tiny Tim, certainly, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Uh, before we, I'm, I'm going to come to the new album now. Clive Noble, one of our listeners. Hi, Clive. He's uh, he's phoned in to say that he's sorry that he can't make the gig tonight. He can't be there, but he's seen you many, many times. And oh. like to thank you for all the inspiration you're giving to you, musicians Clive. in Cardiff and South Wales. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, good. Okay, then the new album then is uh, The Mystery. The Mystery, So yeah. what can we hear on The Mystery? Come on, Well, Tommy. let me play you something from The Mystery. We'd love to. Um, uh, I'll play you <clears throat> a, uh, a composition of mine, uh, I wrote this. Uh, I wrote this song about uh, the explorers Lew- Lewis and Clark, who uh, uh, opened up the American West in the early 1800s. And um, when I read their story, I was very inspired by it. I was very moved. And, and um, you know, they would never have made it if it hadn't been for the Indian people who were already there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the song is called Lewis and Clark, but it's kind of dedicated to the Indians as well. So I'll just play a bit of it. Here it is, Lewis and Clark.
fantastic. Lewis, Lewis and Clark Lewis from and Clark. the new yeah. album from Tommy Emmanuel, and the album's called The Mystery. The Mystery, yeah. Being slightly technical, you use a lot of harmonics. Yeah. And, uh, harmonics, just demonstrate what harmonics are. Just well, there are, there are different kinds. Uh, you can play that style. You get that kind of harp sound oh. there. Gentle of touch, just touching the strings. Like yeah, that. and then you got the, you got those ones as well. <laughs> yeah, I just use all different kinds of things there. Really, really nice. Thank you. I got an email here. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Anne Robertson in Rogerston has called in to say that she thinks Tommy is uh, fantastic. Gareth, Thank you. Gareth also, and has really enjoyed this afternoon's program. Oh, so, isn't that great? Uh, See, that you, is we made so, you made someone's day. Yeah, good for you. Okay, um, we're going to the news very shortly. You're playing at uh, Beaufort Theatre tonight in Emberville. Getting towards the end of the tour now, Tommy. Yep, one more day. Uh, tomorrow is Windsor in the Arts Centre. Right. right, and then where do you spend Christmas? Um, well, I'll be with my my children who who live in Marlow. Right. Um, uh, I'll be with my my children till the twentieth, yeah. which is Tuesday, and then I'll fly back to Nashville. I'll be in my house. Okay. For Christmas. Brilliant. Well, have a great time. The best luck with thanks. the mystery. <clears throat> thanks for having we, us on, and thanks well, for having Gareth on as well. Well, absolutely. And because we've got the two of you here, we've got three minutes to go till the news now. Could you, ooh, could you find the two of you place uh, maybe one last piece before we go to the news headlines? Uh, yeah. Uh, that would be fantastic if you yeah. could just... Uh, what do you want to play, Gareth? Consulting. Um, consulting each other here. Do you want to play Ask You In My Dreams? Yeah, let's do that. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, I'll sing a little bit. And this was, you, this, this was played by Joe Brown at the end of the George yeah, Harrison exactly. tribute concert, right? Yeah. I'll see you in my dream. I'll hold you in my dream. Well, someone took you out of my arms. And still I feel the thrill of your charm. Lips that once were mine Tender eyes that shine They will light my lonely way tonight I'll see you in my dreams I'll pick it Fantastic. Tommy Emmanuel and Gareth Pearson, thank you very much for, for having us, uh, for, for joining us rather, on the programme. And uh, if you're uh, going to the Beaufort Theatre tonight, then what time are you going on stage tonight? Whenever I damn well like. No, it's about, <laughs> uh, I think it's an eight o'clock start for uh, Gareth. Great. Yeah. And uh, Tommy will follow that. Thank you, guys. Really, Thanks for having thank us you. on. Brilliant. Really nice yeah. to have those guys. Weren't they fantastic? Great to have them on the afternoon show here on BBC Radio Wales. Right, the Advent Chest.